Hello! Yo, uh, Flyan here, and I played every relevant Xeno game at this point in time, and I learned a lot of cool stuff. Some of it, life-changing, if I do say so myself. By playing every game, my entire, like, perspective on the series has completely shifted. It's actually, it's, it's crazy. Before I get into that, though, I just want to say there's no, like, major spoilers about anything, though, in this video, so if you haven't played something like Gears or Saga or or any of the Xeno games, it's totally cool. I just want to get into certain aspects of it, but not be like, yo, you know, that part at the end where Tatsu gets into the big mech and then becomes God was crazy in Xenoblade X, dude. Yeah, I'm not gonna be saying anything like that. That's not real, by the way. So before I get into what I learned, I want to talk about, like, my journey playing these games. It's a very unconventional path. I know there's, like, the chronological way that some people suggest playing, but for me, like, when I first played Xenoblade 1, that's, like, all I knew about Xenoblade, you know? Like, I, I didn't know the lore. I didn't really know anything about Monolith Soft. I just I was just like, okay, one day, you know, I started streaming, what, like, two and a half years ago, I was um, playing a lot of Monster Hunter, and then one of my friends suggested, like, hey, man, you know, I know you like some JRPGs. You should try Xenoblade. And I was just like, oh, you know, like, I remember playing that for, like, five minutes back when it came out, but never got into it. And I was like, okay, sure, I'll play it. Played on stream, immediately got hooked after getting through, like, the first part. It was so different than anything else I've ever played that I was just like, okay, wait a minute. Like, I kind of get what, what people were talking about. So I started playing it, and I think a couple months later, Definitive Edition came out. And I was like, okay, well, I haven't beaten this yet. May as well start over on Definitive and, and see what's different, what's changed. And then I was like, oh, this is interesting. Like, the art style is like, completely different. And then I beat the entire game. I was like, wow, okay, I I think this is a very special game that's, that's quite unlike a lot of things that I play. That's where my journey started, you know, I think most people, you know, they start with one. But I didn't, at that time, have any interest to, like, expand past that. Because for most people, when I, I talk to them about 2, they don't really say that, like, 2 is a direct sequel or anything at the time. And at least from what I saw people were very polarized by the second game you know whether it's its art style its themes whatever so i wasn't sure whether i was gonna like delve into the series or if i just wanted to remain a dude who's like i play this game i like this game this is kind of cool riki's there uh rock bar is epic you know that's probably what sold the deal to play the second game it was rock bar all right rest in peace eventually i was convinced to at least give uh xenoblade 2 a try now like i mentioned before i my perspective on it, like, I, I didn't think it was gonna be as good of a game as it ended up being. And maybe it's me indoctrinated by other people telling me what to think about the game at the time. But I was like, okay, this is just probably like some fucking anime-ass RPG, you know, whatever. It's probably not gonna be that deep and, you know, maybe the gameplay is fun and the characters are funny, but that's about it. But then, you know, I actually ended up playing it and I was like, wait, this... Kind of like, you know, judging a book by its cover. To be fair, the cover has... Some in insane imagery on it, I would say. I, I don't think people's criticisms of like the art style and stuff like that is un un like without merit. I still don't really like the, the the lots of anime trope type stuff that's in the game. However, I do believe it was disguising all the the wonderful uh, character developments, the rich and deep story, the the incredible world building that the game has. You know, a couple dozen hours into the game, as I'm playing, it's it's kind of like all setting into me, and then I beat the game. I beat two, it was a lot of fun. I think at the time I still probably preferred one, but for me, that game in particular, I feel like two gets better the more you play it. After playing it again, then I was just like, I wasn't as distracted by the, the crazy anime elements and I was more focused and honed in on the story and, and the characters and then the, like, it, it, it got richer and better for me. And the more played, the more, like you realize how many secrets are in this game and, and things to do and explore and it's just like it's endless there's so much content in that game it's insane and i think at that point i was like okay this isn't just like a one-off xenoblade thing this is like okay so far the series has been really cool then i play torna which is like you know the dlc that's a prequel to that game add more context to the game it was a lot of fun it's like a short sweet story and i was like okay i beat torna I may as well play Future Connected, which is something that came out with uh, Definitive Edition, which is after the first game's story, but also ties in, possibly, with the third game's story that's coming out. I played that, that was fun. And then around that time is when I started Xenoblade X. Now, Xenoblade X was different. It was definitely different. Honestly, it, a lot of aspects, it didn't feel like it was made by, this, by the same company, but, you know, it obviously was. 
Um, I was on the Wii U. You know, we had the um, the gamepad to use. Uh, Tatsu's there. <laughs> And what really struck me as, as cool about that game is the amount of exploration you could do. Obviously, I felt that the first two games were very narrative focused. And, and I feel like this game was just like, you do your own adventure. Because for me, with the main story, not so much the affinity missions or anything like that, like the story, the direction of everything just seems so weird and off-putting sometimes and just like, like rigid. That was okay because I found so much more in the other aspects of the game that still made it like really fun. So I was playing through that for a while. I didn't only, I, I beat it recently, a couple months ago. Because I was so busy doing the side stuff, I, I wasn't really focusing on, on, on getting the story done. But I was like, okay, Xenoblade 3 is going to come out. I don't think this game's going to be relevant to it, but I mean, at least beat it. Let me let me beat the game. So I beat X. It was a great time. I love Doug. He's cool. And um, I think riding the scales and flying around with them is, is probably one of the funnest like gaming experiences. It's so cool. It's over the rainbow. You know, it's, it's fun. So when I started playing the older Xeno games, like their, their originals, the progenitor. I started playing Xeno Gears and Xeno Saga simultaneously for the purpose of finishing them in time before Xenoblade 3. Obviously, since I've already finished it and we still have like at this point of the video's release, like 40 days left, I made some good progress, but I didn't know at the time how long the games would be. So when I started playing those games, that's when my entire perspective on this game series as a whole shifted like completely and i think the biggest thing to do that for me was this game right here this beautiful goddamn game i honestly think this game is a piece of art i wish i played this when i was when i was younger and had my ps1 i just honestly didn't even know about it i only recently learned about it and playing through it was an ab absolutely mystical it was a to put it bluntly it was a wild ride it really was the, the themes and stuff that were in this game that were explored, the characters, the, the world that they created in Xenogears, there's a lot in that game I have never seen talked about or expressed or shown in any video game ever. And this is what, 1998? The game itself doesn't look like they made it in that time. Like the visuals, whether it was like the 3D models or the fact that they integrated a system where you're one sprite in a 3D environment with a with a completely movable camera. The way they even like did their textures in the game and, and, and effects was just so... I couldn't believe this was a PS1 game. I couldn't. And that was just the visual aspect of it. The fact that it was on it was on top of this like beautiful story. It was... It was really cool to not only experience that for the first time, but like experience it with people who, who played the game before, who grew up with the game, you know, who were, who were watching it. And it was so good that when I was playing through, you know, Xenosaga, which to me at the time felt like a very different experience than Xenogears. I was still enjoying it for, for many reasons, but let, let's start out with how the journey went. Okay, so we started playing Xenosaga 1. I'm not gonna lie, this game's a little rough. What kept me hooked was the characters, the cutscenes themselves, and the fact that I have a soft spot for PS2 turn-based, you know, RPGs. I was just like, okay, you know, I'm, I'm, I'll give this a shot. It had some really rough gameplay. The turn-based to me wasn't too engaging. There was a big lack of music when you're you're roaming through the world, so it just felt it felt unfinished to me. Well, technically, you know, Xeno Gears, the second disc, is quite unfinished. I still enjoyed it though, but with Xeno Saga. I was like, okay, you know, there's two more games. Everyone's telling me it's going to get better. And I'm kind of, I have a, I like these characters. I like Alan. I like Shion. All right, let's see where this goes. And then I started playing Xenosaga 2, which was interesting. Now, I was told that this game would be dog, would be dog water. That some people were like, if you don't have time, just skip it, you know? And that's why I was kind of okay with getting the GameStop case for this game. I gotta regret this case now. I, I think I kind of want the original one because I had a great time with 2. I thought 2, personally, did everything 1 did better. I I, I think the cutscenes were, were animated so well. The, it, the game starts off explosively. They introduce you to Jinizuki and, and he's badass. Mech fights were more engaging. The combat itself was 
quite complicated, but once you figured out what you were doing, it was very satisfying to pull off, like with all the like elemental stuff going on, the the brake system. It was it was cool. It was it was fun. And I enjoyed how the story was less trying to explain this, like all the different uh, organization stuff and more focused on like Junior and Albedo, like their story. I think it was cool. It was like by beginning and end, it was just like a nice story. And I think probably my favorite thing about it, I think out of the entire Xenosaga series, it has my favorite OST. There's just something about it that hits so, it just, it, it tickles my ears. Yeah, two was great. And then I played this goddamn beautiful game, Xenosaga 3. Oh my God. People were hyping this up the entire time I was playing through Xenosaga and they were absolutely correct. This game, wow. It felt to me like a love letter to uh, Xenogears, and um, that's where my perspective shifted with this entire series, is that I am I realized that a lot of the themes, the things that have been shown and portrayed in Xenogears is paralleled and sometimes directly referenced by these other games. I didn't know this. I didn't, I never, when playing Xenoblade, went to like YouTube and was like, what does Xeno mean? And are they even connected? I, I know any lore videos. I didn't check anything to support this. My journey has been me like, like realizing this as I'm playing, which felt cool though. Cause I, I had like zero idea going into it. Like I just thought, oh, this company made these games. They have similar names. That's it. And then that, and that's where I was wrong because this goddamn game keeps uh, bleeding into the other ones and which I'm totally fine with because this is my goddamn favorite game now of all time this game's a masterpiece even if it is unfinished it is still <laughs> leagues better than so many games that exist so this recontextualized everything I knew about the original Xenoblaze 1 and 2 like knowing that it made me want to experience and understand the the world that these games are in so much more in the sense that like Probably the only other game I've ever invested a lot of time into its lore is probably something like Dark Souls. I think the lords in those games are, are a lot of fun to kind of like ooh, figure out and stuff, but I didn't see myself being interested in that in like Xenoblade games, but yeah, after playing Gears and Saga, I, I, I am now a Xenohead. So in between two and three, there's like a, a, a cell phone game, Pied Piper, it's called, which explains the story of one of the characters, uh, Ziggy, and what happened with him. I, I read the script of that, and uh, I watched the missing year portion of the game. That's like a year after two, and what happened in between that and the third game. Not only did I do that, after I beat Xenogears, I not only did I read the entire Perfect Works, which is a book that essentially has a bunch of world building and, and lore that was like excluded from the game itself, like explained. I, I summarized it in like a document and and presented it to stream with like what I got from it and what I learned. Not only that, I also learned that the world building and, and, and this universe is so intertwined that they even... Some critical information, I learned this yesterday from the Siren model kit. In the, in the manual on how to make it, the first image... Well, I, I didn't know because it was in Japanese, but this translated essentially directly relates this this gear this universe to xeno gears i i was like what how that just makes me so excited for the next game because a lot of the things that happen in these games kind of happen in like this cycle whether they're they're directly connected or not i don't know after playing this i think i i might even prefer the the stories that have been told in, in gears and saga than some of the stuff that i've seen in, in xenoblade so far I think Xenoblade 3 is definitely going to like hammer in some some really cool things, especially if uh, they're going to follow the patterns that we've seen in these previous games. Anyways, sorry, I'm doing a lot of rambling, but uh, you know, I, I have to put my thoughts about all this somewhere, dude. It's been stewing. It's been stewing. And you know, I love my stew. I'd put Tatsu in that stew. Who joke. So what I'm trying to say, ultimately, what I learned was these older Xeno games completely recontextualize everything from these games that I already enjoyed to the point where now I enjoy them so much more because it's not just like it's not just because it's it's like oh look this guy's a that reference it's I I'm seeing so much more that's connected that I would have like never known if I haven't played those games which on their own are amazing but as a as a whole series 
just just makes everything so perfect. I'm 100%ing all the Xenoblade games now with like a, a, a newfound perspective on these games that I, I play, like just to see these connections exactly. At this point of the video, I've already 100%ed Xenoblade Definitive Edition. I think we've just beaten Future Connected and we're starting Torna. And, and then we're gonna be 100%ing two. And anytime we have extra before Xenoblade 3 comes out, I'll be just playing through X and trying 100% that. Although I'm not sure if I can manage that in time. Yeah, I think at the end of this, this journey I went on, I'm just like, I went from guy who enjoyed Xenoblade game into somebody who absolutely adores the series now because it's unlike anything else I've ever played or experienced in terms of like a whole franchise. It's cool. It's just, it's somehow like got the passion out of me. I'd love to talk about it more. You know, I, I probably will make a video individually about these games at some point. And I know I still, at this point in time in the video, have to release the Xenosaga videos. I'm sorry, it takes, there's so much, it's so much editing, man. Anyways, thank you guys for stopping by. If you want to catch me playing these games or want to talk more about uh, Xeno stuff, please visit my Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash fly in. That's where all the cool shit is. That's where all the people are, you know, enjoying their time. Or, uh, you know, feel free to subscribe if you're new to the channel and uh, want to see more of this kind of stuff. I hope you enjoyed the video. I don't usually do like this talkie videos with a goddamn green screen that uh, displays cool things. I, this is This is very new for the channel, but... I didn't know of a better way to express my feelings, so I thought this was kind of cool. Anyways, I'll catch you guys later. See ya!